Florida is reporting its largest single-day increase in new coronavirus infections. The State Department of Health announced today more than 15,000 new cases. Countries in Eastern Europe are reporting fresh outbreaks of the coronavirus. Croatia and Hungary are seeing a surge in new infections. Cases are also on the rise in India, Brazil and South Africa. Two U.S. Marine bases on Okinawa are on lockdown this weekend because of a coronavirus outbreak. Dozens of Marines are reported to have tested positive over the past few days. I'm Windsor Johnston, NPR News. You don't need to have a medical background or a lawyer to fill out an advance directive. You don't even need a lot of time, and I promise it's not too morbid. You can easily find an advance directive form online. There are different versions, but basically it has two sections. The first is the most important, the medical power of attorney. Choose a person who can legally make healthcare decisions for you if you can't. Think about the person in your life who understands you, your goals, your values, your priorities, and then is able to set aside their own wishes for you and to be a voice for you. That's Dr. Pallavi Kumar, a medical oncologist and palliative care physician at the University of Pennsylvania. She says your medical proxy should be someone you trust who can handle stress because your loved ones will disagree on what to do and it can be emotional. So you want to name someone who will carry out your wishes. Kumar says research shows when a caregiver sees a loved one die in the hospital under circumstances they believe that person never would have wanted, they're in emotional pain for a long time. At six months and a year after death, these bereaved caregivers are still suffering from pretty severe depression and anxiety. There's even some data to show that the survival for those caregivers is shortened. So think of an advance directive as a gift you're giving your loved ones. The second section of the advance directive document is called a living will. This part walks you through the general approach of how you want to die and what kind of care you want. Do you want to be resuscitated? Are you okay being hooked up to a ventilator? How do you feel about a feeding tube? Dr. Jessica Zitter is an ICU and palliative care physician in California. She says there's no right or wrong decision. It's personal. Someone once told me her father was she's an old, crusty Italian man, and he said, if someone else has to wipe my behind, I do not want to live. But there's many, many others of us. If I was quadriplegic and still have an intellectual and emotional relationship with people, I don't think I'd want to die. Even among patients who are very, very sick with cancer, less than half have had conversations about how they want to die. So it's critical to share your wishes with your medical proxy and your loved ones, as well as your doctor. Share a copy of the form with them. Dr. Pallavi Kumar says the end of life is about more than just the medical aspect. When she knows a person's priorities, that helps inform her treatment plan. For some patients, it might mean spending time at home with family. For others, it means trying every treatment possible for as long as possible. They would say, if you're telling me that a chemotherapy could give me another month, I want that month because that's another month I have with my six-year-old. While no one can predict when they'll die, an advance directive can help you plan for how. It's not a guarantee, but a safety net for having what Dr. Zitter thinks of as a good death. In order to figure out what a good death is, you have to figure out what a good life is and what living well means to you. That's the only way to know how to die well, because actually they're, they're kind of reflections of each other. In anyone else's hands, this could have been an exploitive, insulting mess of a series. But instead, creator Katori Hall has built a wonderfully compelling, authentic community of characters centered on the pink. A strip club so popular on Saturdays, there's a line of eager customers outside waiting to enter, just like the grand old days of Studio 54. Right off at the 2-9 in the Dirty Delta, as fertile as the 9. As the story begins on P-Valley, and I can't really say on radio what the show's name actually stands for, the pink has a problem. Its marquee performer, Mercedes, played with the ferocious spirit by Brandy Evans, has decided to retire. Mercedes last dance. Hmm. After seven years, huh? It took you long enough. Well, my 401k ain't need a spinning. Size, 
25, retirement age for a stripper nowadays, so. What you gonna do when you leave? What OG do? Count her money. Spend her days counting her money? Something tells me her retirement's not gonna go quite so smoothly. Hall's characters are gritty, plain-spoken, and steeped in the South, with way too much cussing to get into a public radio review. There's Autumn Knight, a light-skinned, aspiring stripper who takes lots of abuse from other dancers for her skin tone. There's Mercedes, who hopes to get out of the game and buy a building to run a dance program for young girls. And there's club owner Uncle Clifford, played by Nico Annan. He's a black, gender-fluid hustler with an impeccable blonde wig and gleaming crystal nails who is both mentor and demanding taskmaster to the women who dance at the pink. His secret, lenders are close to foreclosing on his building and the bank won't take any more of his bad checks even when he begs them to. Look, just hold on to this to next week. I post it. Ain't that fine establishment of yours in need of some toilet paper? <laughs> Who told you that, your husband? At times, it feels a bit like a nighttime soap opera, but set in a Deep South strip club. Still, between the storylines about domestic abuse and a secret casino project, we see takes on colorism, closeted gay men, and the struggle to survive when you're poor, black, and outside polite society in the South. All the directors in this first season are female, which may explain why so many shots of the dancers feel constructed from their point of view. A departure from the leering male gaze found in many other films and TV shows about strippers. There's even a bit of a cameo, as former Grey's Anatomy co-star Isaiah Washington pops up to chew the scenery as the town's first black mayor. He explains to his son, an aspiring real estate developer, why he needs to bribe members of the town's city council to get a secret casino project approved. It's just how things work in the Delta. Have always worked around here. Guess they don't call it the Dirty South for nothing. Yeah, man. We got the police discounts. So we won't have to have no citywide vote. Because if those Bible thumpers find out about this casino, they gonna send it straight to hell. Pea Valley is a drama that uses sex and titillation to spice a deeper story, presenting the kinds of characters rarely seen in an hour-long, high-quality drama on subscription cable. <laughs>